nice to be here. At my age, it's nice to be any place. I'm coming to you from my new home in the Beverly Hills section of heaven. And I'm here to wish my good friend Ann Margaret a very happy birthday. You know, I met Annie when she was 19 years old. She and a piano friend, a player friend of hers, came into my office and wanted an audition. And so she sang and she danced for about five minutes and I knew that we had discovered gold. So I asked her if she would be my opening act in Vegas. I took her down to Vegas with me and she was just wonderful. And I remember there was a uh, Christmas Eve show that we were doing and after she did her set, she came backstage and I noticed she was crying. And I said, Annie, why are you crying? She said, I miss my mother at Christmas. I said, well, go into my dressing room and, and call your mother and just charge it to me. I went on stage, did my show, came back about an hour later, and she's still in the dressing room. Finally, she comes out, almost two hours in there. And I said to her, Annie, did you talk to your mother? She said, yes. I said, well, why didn't you just have your mother come over here and watch the show? She said, my mother's in Sweden. I almost passed out. Well, Annie, Annie was great working with. Annie used to love to run her fingers through my hair. I walked into my dressing room once and I caught Annie running her fingers through my hair. Well, we've got a great show for Ann Margaret. It's called Ann Margaret and Friends. And ladies and gentlemen, here's your host, Frank Nicotero. Now, my name is Frank Nicotero. I am going to be your guide for this evening. And it's going to be an evening of song, dance, and story. And uh, I'm going to transport you guys back to the 60s a little tonight. How many people remember the 60s? Apparently, you didn't have much fun if you remember them. Okay, anyway. But we're glad that you're here. And since it is kind of a 60s vibe, we ask one important thing. No flash photography during the show. And it's, it's the 60s. It's not like everyone carries a camera around in their pocket. Thank you, bro, too. All right. I want to explain that a tribute artist never really claims to be a specific person, but instead pay homage to the life and career of that individual. Now, tonight in this tribute show, we are here to celebrate the ongoing career of Anne Margaret. Uh, Anne Margaret fans, I'm sure that's why you're here. Now, you're going to see some of her most iconic songs and performance, performances. Some of them include various legendary men she stood shoulder to shoulder with. Who would you like to see maybe performing something like that with who? Elvis Costello. That is correct, ladies and gentlemen. He will be doing a vintage set of 70s. No, of course, the king. Now, uh, to not be too long-winded, you guys are going to see enough of me throughout the night. We want you to sit back, have a great time, but don't be shy. You want to clap along, you want to hoot and holler, that's what it's all about, okay? Now, I'd like to allude to what the great George Burns told Anne Margaret prior to their first performance at the Congo Room in Las Vegas at the Sahara Hotel. You guys remember the Sahara Hotel? Anyone out there? Some people? Maybe you met there? Very good. Now listen, George Burns, and if you want me to, I will try a George Burns impersonation right now. I'll try my best. Here we go. George said to Anne Margaret, Annie. People don't only want to hear your voice, they want to see where it's coming from. Since my baby left me, I found a new place to dwell. Down at the end of Lonely Street and a break of tell
dressed in black. They've been so long on lonely street, they never would go back. so much. This next song is one of my first favorites. <laughs>
take your time. She purchased an orange red velvet pantsuit that she found at a boutique right here in Beverly Hills. Applause for pantsuits, yes, thank you. <laughs> or are you applauding for Beverly Hills? How many people are from Beverly Hills? Oh, good, all right. Four people came over the hill. Thanks for doing that, all right. I know you, the valley. Okay, anyway, uh, was it a pantsuit, ma'am? Is that what you're a fan of? Is it the colors orange and red? Either way, we don't mind. We love your energy. Now, however, when she showed up in that orange and red pantsuit, George Burns saw the outfit, and he seemed less than, less than enthused about it. And he asked her what happened to the sweater and pants that she had worn to the audition. You know, the tight sweater and the tight pants. Emphasis on tight. Applause for tight. Okay. And that was when George famously told Anne Margaret, Annie, people don't only want to hear your voice. They want to see where it's coming from. Now, I didn't do the George Burns impersonation there, but if you want, the cue line at the end is one more George Burns impersonation, possibly. We want that? What are you thinking? All right. Making sure you're still with me. Good. Now, however, after her first few performances, Gracie Allen, George Burns' legendary wife, had overheard a couple of the showroom waitresses who were supportive of Anne Margaret, but felt as if the tight pants and sweater could be giving off the wrong impression. Instead, Gracie suggested a nice evening dress as a replacement. No applause for evening dresses. Okay, all right. Thought maybe her. All right. Now, when Anne Margaret deferred to George for the final say, he replied rather smartly, better do what Gracie says. <laughs> I know, I'm nailing the impersonation. I know, all right. Now, I want you guys to say you were to find yourself at the Dunes Hotel in Las Vegas in October of 1960. Yes, sir, he went, yeah, all right. You guys would have witnessed two obscure acts back in October 1960. The first would have been an undergraduate, undergraduate group from Northwestern University called the Subtle Tones, which featured a pianist, bass player, drummer, and a beautiful young sophomore named Anne Margaret. And the second act would have been a skilled trumpeter named, do you remember him, give him some applause, Al Hurt. Al Hurt, yes, exactly. Now this wouldn't be the last time these two would see each other. Not long after, at the RCA Victor's Hollywood studio, Anne Margaret and Al Hurt met for a two night, eight hour session where they recorded Beauty and the Beard. I'm not making that title up, but go ahead and laugh. Good, all right. Beauty and the Beard, because she was beautiful, he was the beard. That's where they came up. They were smart in the 60s too, all right. Up to this point, why no one had thought to, pa uh, excuse me, up to this point, why no one had yet thought to pair Al Hurt with a female singer was beyond belief. It was a match made in heaven. Now this, uh, this album offers a rare opportunity to listen to the smooth, deep voice of Al Hurt himself. So, ladies and gentlemen here at the Al Portal, imagine this, Al Hurt sitting on a high stool, smiling with encouragement at Ann Margaret, who in turn cheered him through his masterful solos. Of course, how could he not perform spectacularly with lovely Anne Margaret, whispering what would encourage any man with the words, go, go Big Daddy, we go. go. So for this next song, I'd like to introduce my husband, Mr. Michael Knight, to sing one of my favorite Anne Margaret and Al Hurt duets. Hey, baby. My baby don't care for clothes, my baby just cares for me. Ooh, my baby don't care for furs and laces, my baby don't care for high toned places, my baby don't care for rings or other expensive things. She's sensible as can be. Baby, don't 
clothes yeah. And baby, it really shows yeah. He wears a size 53 <laughs> It's a 30 My baby don't care who's laughing Let him laugh My baby just cares for me Baby don't care for gifts or gals who fill out ships. My baby just cares for me. My baby don't care about your friends. And saving his dough is much more pleasant. My baby don't care for stuff and bagels and that go with lots. My baby's a mystery. Ah, mystery. My baby don't care who knows it. Welcome back, Mr. Michael Knight.
his conscience guide him on. He wants to marry me. So let her conscience guide her mother. She wants to marry me and be my honey bee. Every minute she gets bolder, now she's leaning on my shoulder. Ma, she's kissing me. Now, at the audition for State Fair, when it came time for her personality screen test, or just a screen test, uh, she was asked to move and sing. Now, she agreed, but mentioned that having an audience made her feel much more comfortable. I understand that myself. I like to have an audience even around the house for chores. <laughs> to which the director of the movie, Robert Parrish, said, you know what, I will do it, and responded by opening up the sound doors of the stage and allowing people to come in and watch her screen test. And she booked the role. How about that? Isn't that pretty interesting? I thought that was great. Now, now this next song comes from one of Anne Margaret's most iconic films, and I'm sure all of you out there know it. Now, this song in particular was shot at the end of the movie because the director, George Sidney, felt like it just needed a little something more. And the movie studio did not agree. So he put in his own money and they rented out a sh sound stage, and they shot the opening and closing scenes of Bye Bye Birdie. Of course, later, the studio admitted they were wrong and paid him back. So this is Bye Bye Birdie. We love you, Conrad. Just for me and each 
This next song was, uh, was from another movie that Anne Margaret was in, and it's called Pleasure Seekers. <laughs>
you're still under hypnosis. Okay, all right. Uh, listen, we wanted to say Anne Margaret always managed to capture the attention of her audiences with her wild moves and sweet, sultry voice. But in 1964, that brought her to share the silver screen with Elvis Presley in the classic film, Viva Las Vegas. How many fans of that do we have here tonight? That is the best. And by the way, as soon as I mention the movie, I know the song is all in your head already. So help me out, we'll do it. And do it. One, two, three. Right, mostly the women, but nice job, all right? Is there one gentleman that wants to do it? Three, two, one. I should have stuck with the ladies. Okay, uh, now Viva Las Vegas, this was the first and uh, only time that Elvis ever had co-star equal billing with another actress, and it was Anne. Viva Las Vegas brought a Golden Laurel nomination to the musical performance for both Elvis and Anne Margaret. Now, Anne played Rusty Martin, a swimming teacher at a hotel in Las Vegas who catches the eye of a race car driver named Lucky Jackson, played by Elvis. Lucky attempts to woo Rusty, who seems to be immune to his charm. Now this next section was performed a little bit differently at the premiere of Anne Margaret and Friends. However, we did want to give an extra big special shout out to all of our guest entertainers tonight. And this next song in particular was the very first song that I ever did as an Anne Margaret tribute artist. So it's very, very special to me. And I'd like to give a big warm welcome to my friend, Ted Torres. She loves me, she loves me not. She loves me, she loves me not. She loves me, she loves me, she loves me. The lady loves me. And it shows, in spite of the way she turns up her nose. I'm her ideal, her heart's desire. Under that eye, she's burned like fire. She likes to cuddle up to me. She's playing hard to get. The lady loves me, but she doesn't know it yet. The gentleman has I will fare as much as an elephant or bear. I like to take him for a spin back to the zoo to visit his kin. He's got about him much appeal as a soggy cigarette. The lady loves him, but he doesn't know. The lady's got a crush on me. The gentleman's crazy, obviously. The lady's dying to be kissed. The gentleman needs a psychiatrist. I'd rather kiss a rattlesnake or play Russian roulette. The lady loves me, but she doesn't know it yet. She's falling fast, she's on a skid. Both of his heads flipping their lids. Tonight she'll hold me in her arms. I'd rather be holding hydrogen bombs. Will someone tell this a Romeo? I'm not his Juliet. A lady loves me, but she doesn't know it yet. She wants me Like poison ivy And he's me Like a hole in the head Everyone can tell she's got it bad oh, He's mad The gentleman is an egotist I'm simply aware I'm hard to resist He's one man I can learn to hate How's about having Dinner at eight. I'd rather die with a Frankenstein in a moonlight. A oh, lady loves me, but she doesn't know it yet. 
Oh, yes, she loves me. Take that shrinking violet. Oh, she really loves me. Here's one gal you'll never get. She love, love, loves me. Would you like to make a bet? I said the lady loves me. The gentleman's all wet. All right, we're into Viva Las Vegas now. You guys with me on that? That was great. That was outstanding. Those two killed it. Now, if you remember the movie Into the Pool, Lucky went losing all of his money. But that wouldn't deter him from pursuing the vivacious Rusty. Now, uh, spoiler alert, am I spoiling the, the plot line for Viva Las Vegas for anybody? Okay, Steve's daughter, have you seen the movie? <laughs> we'll get you, well, it's probably on Netflix. Or, wait, what is Netflix? It's the 60s. Okay, anyway. Now, uh, we see down and out uh, race car driver take up a position as a waiter. That was what Elvis's character. He took up a job as a waiter to pay off his debt to the hotel. Now, a little bad luck never stopped Lucky Jackson in his endeavors, and with a little persistence, he managed to convince Rusty to go on a date and dance or something. That was my Elvis. You remember everybody asked me, I remember, go on a dance, go on a date and dance or something. I'm gonna leave it to Victor. Okay, all right. Um, George Burns was better? Okay. And Margaret and Elvis's chemistry on screen was absolutely palpable. We all loved it. During a meeting with the choreographer of the film, David Winters, they were trying to work out the movements for one of the songs. Okay, so uh, they go in, and uh, David was trying to work out the movements for one of the songs, and the two listened intently, and after it finished, Elvis said to put on the song again. Now, the two began to move in perfect sync, as if they had rehearsed this song many times. And after it finished, David said, you know what, great, just do that. <laughs> now, moving forward in Viva Las Vegas, Lucky now gets his chance with Rusty, at a social where she insists that if he won't dance, that he should at least sing, because she knew he was good at that. I want everybody to snap your fingers and I want everybody to clap your hands real loud. Oh, everybody, 
on, keep it going for Victor and Rachel on that one, huh, ladies and gentlemen? I had such a good time on that one, I'm like, oh, I gotta be on stage, I forgot. All right, I was, I was over here dancing by myself. Did anyone see? No, it was sad. Okay, anyway, uh, that was outstanding, wow. Uh, we're gonna right now, uh, apparently, uh, the trick to dating a girl is just to break in into a, an impromptu song and then she falls for you. Does that still work nowadays? I don't know. Would that? Okay, I'll, I'll make a mental note on that. Uh, so, uh, let's see here. Both Elvis and Anne experienced music in a visceral and powerful manner that would not let them stand still once it began. Now, with each pelvic thrust or shoulder drop, this is getting hot. Okay, uh, with each pelvic thrust or shutter shoulder drop, the other would respond immediately. The electric energy from these two charged the crew of Viva Las Vegas with a sense of alertness. Though both individuals were rather shy and reserved, once the music began, they came alive. And to do so with someone who could match your energy is nothing short of bliss. Now I'd like to welcome back Ted Torres to sing what I'd say. Treat me wrong. Come and love you, Daddy. I'm not alright. Hey, hey. Mm, alright now. See the girl with the diamond ring. She knows how to shake that thing, alright. Hey, hey. Mm, alright now. favorites and I'm very grateful that Ted said that he would sing it for me. It was not in the original production however I couldn't pass up the opportunity to have him sing this song. So here's Ted Torres singing If You Think I Don't Need You. If you think I don't need you take a look at my eyes maybe these ain't raindrops Falling out of the sky Since you've been gone 
I've been so alone Every day I don't need you And then baby you're wrong Every day I don't love you Oh, What could I do To prove to you baby That my love is true And since you've been gone I've been so alone Every day I don't love you And then baby you're wrong my life has been the same since you left me I ain't had a week of sleep in seven days I don't know what to do, I'm going crazy I just walk the floor at night and call your name If you think I don't do right, I'll change my ways I'll do what you want me to, I'll be your slave since you've been gone, I've been so alone Baby, they got to love you, and then maybe you're wrong Yeah! Alright! If you think I don't know right, I'll change my ways I'll do what you want me to, I'll be your slave I'll sing the same old song, ever since you've been gone As if you think I don't need you, and then baby you're wrong And then baby you're wrong, and baby you're wrong Now, in the film, Lucky is determined to race as it seems to be in his blood and with his lost money, he has to work even harder to save up for the more powerful racing engine he really wants. However, Rusty knows how dangerous racing is and isn't thrilled about his career choice. Now, with the employee talent show coming up, Lucky thinks he can win and use the prize money to afford his new motor. Rusty reminds him that she is in the contest as well and will give him a run for his money. Mother brought me up as a good little girl And mother was always right, she said Respect your elders as you should, little girl It pays to be polite Remember it pays to be polite Once I met a nice old man upon the village green. I helped him cross the street into his lane. Next day he sent the biggest brooch I'd ever seen to show his appreciation. Now wasn't that sweet?
appreciation. And that is always one of my favorite songs to perform. Now this next song was in the movie Viva Las Vegas. However, this version was not. It was cut from the movie and turned into a solo for Mr. Elvis Presley. But originally, this song was a duet and it was the wedding vows. Now I'd like to bring my husband, Mr. Michael Knight, back up here to sing this with me because I think that it would be that much more special. So please give a round of applause from my husband, Mr. Michael Knight. I give, give you my heart Today, tomorrow, and forever friends we don't think so and it happens to be one of our personal favorite duets so please welcome mr leo days to help sing you're the boss <laughs> When it comes to twisting, I just got to keep insisting, baby. You should do swing. When it comes to twisting, I just got to keep insisting on daddy. Hey, you are the king. Baby, you 
got me beat up and down inside out in a quad. Oh yeah. Money in the middle of the night when the moon is shining bright. I hear the boss. Talking about dancing and down home romancing on my baby yeah. You are the queen When a push comes to shove When it comes down to love You're a horse Oh yeah Right in the middle of the night When the moon is shining bright on your box mm, yeah. You're, you're the best of everything, everything. You're a peach, you're a diamond, you're a pearl, you're, you're the best of everything. everything, oh daddy, you're my man. Oh baby, you're my girl now, it costs to know which way the wind is blowing, oh baby. Mm, tell me honey, you sure are white. Yeah, when it comes to knowing which way the wind is blowing, oh Baby, you're a genius when it comes to cooking hot some chili sauce. Oh, yeah. Money in the middle of the night when the moon is shining bright. I, you're the boss. You're, you're the, the boss. boss. You're, you're the boss. boss. You're the boss. Money in the middle of the night when the moon is shining bright. You're the boss. You're the boss. Now, we couldn't end this set without probably the most iconic song in the movie, and that is Viva Las Vegas. So please, welcome back to the stage from our premiere performance, Mr. Victor Trevino. Let's pick it up just a bit. Ready? One, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, swing it, come on. Bright light city's gonna set my soul, gonna set my soul on fire. Got a whole lot of money that's ready to burn. So get those days of high. There's a lot of pretty women waiting out there. They're all living the devil may care. I'm just a devil with a love and despair. Be my Las Vegas. Be my Las Vegas. How I wish that there were more than 24 hours in a day. Even if there were 40 more, I wouldn't sleep a minute away. Cause the blackjack and poker and the roulette wheel, a fortune won and lost on every day. All you need is stone heart and a nurse steel. Be my And your one band is crashing All those holes down the drain Reva Las Vegas turning day In a night time turning night In a daytime if you've seen it or once You'll never be the same again I'm gonna keep on running Gonna have me some fun It may cost me my very last time If I wind up rope I'm a shooter seven with every shot. Viva Las Vegas! Let me hear you. Viva Las Vegas! Viva Las Vegas! Viva! Viva Las Vegas!
Our next song is actually on the Lee, Hazy, Lee, Lee Hazelwood album that we gave away earlier. Who won the album? Okay, all right. See, he already took it. He's already at home listening to it. That's, he was so excited. He's like, I got to get my old headphones out. Okay. Uh, and this was uh, her 10th album released in 1969. What a year 1969 was, wasn't it? Yours truly, birthed. That's right, I know, you're like, holy shit, he's 49? Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> this fuzzed out acid rock song didn't portray Anne Margaret's image, but instead revealed an extremely new dimension to the star. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sam. <laughs> next song is going to get a little bit steamy. Till I'm away that 
1972 at a Lake Tahoe concert, Anne Margaret fell 22 feet off the platform, uh, off the stage. Is that amazing? She broke her left arm and suffered numerous fractures to her facial bones. Now, her husband, Roger Smith, was normally present at all his wife's shows, but that night he had gone home early to be with his daughter, who was starting in a new school. Now, when he learned of her fall, he attempted to get a commercial flight to Tahoe, but the last flight had already taken off. It was late in the evening, so renting a plane was not possible either. So what he did was what any sensible man who knew how to fly a plane would do. Roger and his lawyer, Daniel Gottlieb, climbed the barbed wire chain link fence into Burbank Airfield, which is not so far from here. Uh, they found a plane that was unlocked and fueled up. Yes, now luck was on their side as they located the plane that would take them through the stormy skies without air traffic control all the way to Lake Tahoe. Now, when they arrived, the doctors wanted to operate by cutting into her cheek, which could have left scars. Now, Roger, determined to find a doctor out of L.A. at 3 in the morning who could do the surgery by going in through Ann Margaret's mouth, and he did. He found one. The only problem was they were in Lake Tahoe. The doctor was here in L.A. So despite the protests of the doctor up north, Roger and Daniel located, uh, sorry, loaded an unconscious Ann Margaret into their stolen plane 
and flew her back to LA where she underwent emergency surgery. Is that not incredible, right? And they got frequent flyer miles on Southwest as part of the deal. That's amazing. Uh, 10 weeks to the very day of her accident, Miss Ann Margaret stepped back onto the stage in Las Vegas to perform. Now, if that's not true love, then I can't say what is. That is a great story. Now, we all know you gotta go through a few heartbreaks before you find your true love. And this next song speaks of a heartbreak way back in 1962 from her album, On the Way Up. This is My Last Date With You. Oh, 
now Mac, he spins like a little sailor. Could it be, could it be that boy's done something rash? Suki Tundra, Jenny Diver, oh, Miss Lolly Lou, and Lucy Brown. Now the line. Cheer for the band, ladies and gentlemen. straight here from Los Angeles. All you guys should be so proud. Let's see, so where did Ann go? She said she was gonna put on something nice. You wanna see Ann again? Come on, let's hear, let's hear, let's hear. You look fantastic, you look oh, wonderful. Thank you. Sir, well, you know, why can't General Motors build a body like that? I mean, <laughs> well, you know, I owe a lot to the, the five VX, the, uh, the Royal Canadian Air Force exercises. Uh, I knew a girl that used to do those. She was built like a brick airport. <laughs> but seriously, Dean, don't you do any exercises? <laughs> you know, yeah. elbow bends. <laughs> right, right, of course. Well, you know, I'm a dancer. Yes. What would I do if I ever let my body go? <laughs> I'd be happy to hold it for you. <laughs> so tell me, what's, what's so special about these Air Force bendy exercises? Well, with 5VX, 
It's designed to build physical fitness gradually. So every muscle in the body is eventually developed to its full potential. You see with the 5BX, you do it once a day, every day for 11 minutes. So you gotta be in pretty good shape just to start. <laughs> let, you, let me show you my program of exercises. All right. First I do a couple minutes of this. Okay. And I do a couple minutes of this. All right. I do some of this. Oh, well, I like that. Me too. <laughs> Say, how about we sing these folks a song? That sounds like a plan. Do you have it. something in mind? Yeah, the one we talked about earlier. How about that? I like it. Learn in the hobo jungle things they don't teach in a classroom. Job. You know, Anne has brought smiles and comforts to millions of service members with her tireless work with the USO. Now, as a young starlet and freshman at Northwestern University, she started touring with the USO and has performed multiple times throughout the years. Now, in 1968, Anne Margaret set out on her first around the world Christmas tour, which covered 16 bases, seven different countries, and two naval carriers. Back in 2003, she received the spirit of Hope Award. Now, in honor of all those who have served, we'd like to invite any veterans uh, in the audience to stand and let themselves be recognized, and also any veterans who are currently serving. So we have the house lights up. Where are our vets? Any vets? We'd like to thank you all for being here. Thank you, sir. And everybody, uh, several gentlemen. Thank you, guys, men and women of the service. Thank you very much. Okay, but we want to just uh, once again, point out the outstanding work that Anne Margaret has done for the USO over the years, and there is no higher uh, award you can receive, which is what she did in 2003, winning the Spirit of Hope Award. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, one more time, a big round of applause for all our vets and all the people who continue to serve. Look at your fellow man. Lend him a helping hand, put a little love in your heart. Better. 
place, yes, the world, and the world will be a better place for you, for you and me. And me. You just wait, just wait, and you'll see. children cry put a little love in your heart Cause we need to let the whole world know that we won't let that hatred grow put a little love in your heart and the world, and the world will be a better place i said the world, the world will be a better place for you for you and me and me we'll just wait over 80 different productions from the television screen to the silver screen. Her awards are extensive with Anne Margaret winning five Golden Globes and Emmy and so many other nominations. Yeah, that uh, we'd be here all night if I were to go through them. Now, rest assured that Anne Margaret is uh, and always will be one of the most influential female performers of our time. She conquered Las Vegas, winning her first Las Vegas Entertainer of the Year Award in the 80s. Can you believe that? That's gonna be a crazy time. Still pretending we're in the 60s. Okay, all right. Uh, and Anne was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Uh, you can see it on Hollywood Boulevard, 6501 to be exact, Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California. She got that on February 8th, 1960. That's how long ago. Now, now without any further ado, from the 1962 album, The Vivacious One, this is 13 Men. Last night I was dreaming I dreamed about the age bomb Well, the bomb went off and oh, it was cold I was the only gal on the ground <laughs> Thank you. 
next song, I want to wish a very, very special happy birthday to Miss Ann Margaret. But uh, we wanted to show some footage from the premiere of our show where we had not just the cast and crew, but the entire audience singing it as well. So please feel free to join us at home singing Miss Ann Margaret a very happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Anne Margaret. Happy birthday to you. I hope you enjoyed our show, ladies and gentlemen. And Annie. I hope you enjoyed your birthday wishes from Anne, Margaret, and friends. Annie, I want to wish you a very, very special birthday on behalf of all of your fans, all of the people that work for you, and especially a happy birthday from me. I love you, Annie. This song goes out to a very special lady and friend of ours, Anne Margaret. I wanted to do something special and uh, you know I, I couldn't really think of anything that was appropriate. So what I did was I decided to go with something that was very, you know, very old, seldom heard, and little known. Matter of fact, I even had to Google it to get the lyrics. So I hope you'll bear with me on this, okay? This is the first time I'm doing this. You ready? <clears throat> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Anne Margaret. Happy birthday to you. Did you really think I wouldn't know that one? Thank you very much. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Anne Margaret. Happy birthday to you. I want to wish you the most beautiful of days. I hope you have a great birthday and uh, wishing you all the best, always. May God bless you and thank you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Anne Margaret. Happy birthday to you.